what's good is me tunji from scissor graphics i'm going to be critiquing designs from the group members and i believe you already know that but before i get to the critiquing of the design i want to quickly let you guys know that uh being a good creative person is not as difficult as the way so many creative think it is what is standing between you and being a good creative person is what you spend most of your time doing so be creative is for you to sow seeds and the seed you have to sow as a designer is what are the things you spend most of your time doing are you the type who spend your time most of your time sitting with friends or you are that type of person that prefer watching movies no now there's no offense watching where watching movie but how do you watch the movie as a creative person how we watch movies different from how ordinary people watch movies we watch movies to gather inspiration we don't watch movie like the way people just focus on the story no we watch movie by focusing on the story and then taking time to understand the lightning the um the effects and so on all right so if you really want to be a good creative person I would advise you to follow more of designers who are better than you. Avoid following designers that you are better than. That's not going to help you as a creative person. If you really want to be a good creative person, follow more of designers who are better than you. Save more designs that capture your attention. And then solve the equation of why the designs were able to capture your attention. There are several ways that designs capture our attention. One of it is the layout, there's the color part, and then there's the right uh, use of illustration on the project. All right, so I'm going to stop here, then I'll go straight to the designs that I have today, and I'm going to share what I think is working and what is not working on the design. So let's start. So before I start critiquing the designs, all right, um, I want to especially thank the designers that sent their designs in for me to critique because without you guys, there's no way I'll be able to do this video. So I appreciate you guys for making the move of sending your designs for me to critique. All right. So this is the first design I'm going to critique today. And the first thing I'm going to advise this designer is please, whenever you are asked to work on a design project, all right, know there's a goal, all right, there's a reason why you are asked to work on the project in fact even if the design is for um if it's a fictional project you need to write down the goal of the project and you just you don't just go online gather illustration and put them together with information and then apply to your project no remember your what you are trying to do is to create that trust all right trust where the people who are going to contact you to work on their design projects will know okay yes we're actually safe giving our job to this person. So when you're working on, when you are putting your elements together, please have a go, all right? And um, so the first thing I notice here is the dull layout, all right? Where, you know, we have too many, um, you know, things calling for attention at the same time, all right? We have this, we have this, we have this, and um, yeah, like that. All right, whenever you're working on a design project, all right, you need to first have, you need to, first draw what you plan to use to draw people's attention yeah i know most time images are the first thing that draw people's attention on our design then the next thing you need to work on is your title then after your title the other thing you want to use to draw people's attention should not capture attention like the way the title is going to capture attention and i'm saying this here because of the size of this here all right then um i don't expect this to don't i don't expect it to make this this big all right it should be smaller and then there should be space between the text all right there should be space between the text space is part of how we simplify our project space is part of part of how we control the eye movement on our project but when you make your content too tight like your your your, your letterings you make them too tight like this you're going to affect the flow of uh, reading on the project then the other thing i want to say to this guy is it's not all the fonts you have on your computer that you are to use for designs 
there are some fonts that are not really okay for designs fonts like these are not really okay for designs i know most of the reason why we creatives always want to use elements that are not necessary is we want to create that impression that okay i don't want people to feel i didn't do too much here no the goal is not for you to create that impression that you want people to know you did something no the goal is for you to create a message that tells story in a simple and dynamic way that should be your focus instead of you adding to the project see what you can take away from the project to make the project look simple all right so i'll go straight to the next design here now here i the composition here is dull also and i'm going to tell you why this is dull you know there's the part of contrasts where using color on your illustration all right because i know so many of you think okay so if i'm to use color um the part of focusing on the color on my illustration is not important no the color on your illustration is also important and that's the reason why you're using the illustration so as to use it to you are using it because you want to quickly draw people's attention to look at the project but when you don't focus on the color the value of the colors on the illustration the illustration is going to be hidden and i think that's what is happening you know here all right that's what's happening here um i'm saying this here now because okay if you look at this my background here now you'll notice that the value of the color on this background here is similar to the value of the color we have here if i'm to work on this project i'll rather use a brighter background because the info this stuff the item inside this glass here they are visible enough for me to place this image here on a, br a bright background you know when you have, when you're working on design projects your focus should be on contrast all right contrast contrast and part of how we create contrast is when we place positive or negative so if you're going to place this on your project you are to place it on the negative color of your illustration all right negative color so if i'm to ask every one of you here now i'm sure that every one of you will tell me the right answer if i tell you if you have to group the the um if you have to group this like let's say this is a black and white um okay let's just do it if i change this to black and white now all right and i ask you if you have to group the color of this item here are you going to call it white or black I'm sure everyone of you is going to say, I'm sure you're all going to say, this is black. So imagine you are now putting black on a black background. You know, you are not helping at all that way. It's like you putting a black test on a black background. You know, you won't be able to see what's on it. So in order for you to make your illustration more visible, it's advisable for you to place it on a color that is opposite the color of your illustration. Yeah, I know the glass here is white, all right? But if you look at the illustration, you'll notice that the item inside the glass carry more weight in terms of visibility than the glass and that should be what you what you're supposed to focus on in terms of using the color that uh is negative the color on your background all right i hope you get that and then the other thing i think you did not do well here all right i'm to, uh, referring to this designer all right is you see this this your style of playing with your title here is not is not really okay you know i know I always say this to you guys that contrasting your type is, I mean, contrasting your title is part one of the way you can make your project look dynamic and make it look interesting. But there's a strategic way of doing this. You don't do this by put ju just focusing only yourself. In fact, every project should not be for you, but for the audience. So put yourself in the shoe of the audience. If you are asked to if somebody else do make this type of design and you're asked to read this it will be difficult for you to, for you to quickly understand what they put here most especially if you don't know what this is you don't know what christianity is it will be difficult for you to do this and never cut your never hide or break a type the way you did here because this letter here can be letter e all right some people can think this is letter e they can think this is letter l all right this can be letter l okay so please never do this it's not always um professional all right then the uh overall issue i have with this is that everything is looking too dark there's the contrast is not 
powerful. It's dull. The contrast is dull. And um, I think that's no, that's what's affecting this. So my advice to this designer is work more on placing your content on a background that is opposite the color of your elements. All right. Make sure you work on that. If you can learn to do that, trust me, uh, you are set to one side of um, achieving contrast on your project all right so yeah so this is not really okay all right yeah and it is your information here they are too tiny we can't really see them all right we can't really see them okay so that's for that then let's go straight to our next uh design all right all right so here all right um the composition here is um is dull all right and i'm gonna say i'm gonna explain why this is dull okay um i know so many designers don't understand when you are asked to work on church social media project whenever you are asked to work on church social media project where you are supposed to drive inspiration like to get inspiration should be on movie posters you know church posters movie posters they both share similar style of design and i'll tell you guys why you know church poster is always a story behind the meeting so that they are tell you okay we have this uh meeting where we are trying to make people understand their purpose and for them to tell you your purpose there are some story they will use to back it up um we have this uh um meeting on deliverance before they can teach you how you can be delivered there's a story that backs it up a movie poster before you see the um uh before they have the design excuse me there's a story in fact they've already acted the movie before the 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 movie poster comes out or maybe during the acting of the movie the movie poster is out but the story is already available and that's the same thing that happened to um church uh um, designs all right so whenever you're working on church design have that in mind now i'm not saying you should now go and get a picture of a, a, a explosive image or uh get helicopter and so on no understand the message all right know the goal know the story behind the church uh meeting and if the church if the story have something to do with you using a helicopter please use it all right remember we're storytellers and part of how we do this is by the true make use of the design element to create an unexpected solution all right and why i use the word unexpected solution is because it's the suspense part the unexpected part that we use to drag people's attention to look at our project okay you know the way he the designer play with this title here is not um, really okay so i've given you where you can get inspiration on how you play with your title movie posters see how they play with your title and apply it to your title all right too much of colors okay. when you check out movie posters you realize they don't really use too many colors on the posters and that's the same thing that you're supposed to do when you're working on church posters now there are times when you use more than two colors on the project but we mostly do this if the project is talking about maybe Thanksgiving, something that got to do with happy, fun atmosphere, all right? Or the project is for young people, maybe like kids, all right? That's where you do this. But if the project is not calling for it, please avoid it. And then your layout, very important, all right? The way you justify your information is very important in design. In fact, the aligning of your content, your elements on your design is another way we create contrast. But when you now have too many of flushing left, right, center, um, um, right, and so on, you are going to make the project look too busy. The avoiding of um, not using, uh, uh, not allowing white space on your project is not the only way, <laughs> it's not, it shouldn't be your only focus when working on design projects, all right? There's also the part of you making sure that, okay, every of your content, every of your elements, they are anchored to something like they are holding to, holding on to something this is what i'm saying if i'm to place this title here now all right i can put this under this like this so it looks as if okay, when this is going to drop it's going to drop on this all right but if 
the way okay, like the way this designer did this here now i don't expect him to make this be at the center like this this should be on the same line with this all right something must you know hold something on your design all right supposed to do that so um i think that's for that on this design and i'm going to go straight to the next design here all right so the designer is telling us now that the goal of the project is to teach people how to um sell and buy hand all right which is um uh, okay but i expect this to uh you know to be bigger than this all right and there should be more space in fact there should be more space here all right and this your style of uh, bullet point is old school please avoid it these are bullet points that you see in microsoft word so don't don't do it so push this down make this more smaller all right let me show you what i'm saying yeah i know that everything on your project uh they are all important but i want to let also let you know that there's nothing that sits on your design project neutral everything on your design project will surely grab attention now i'm not now saying that you should now make it so small to the point where it will be difficult for people to see it that's not the idea that's not my point here i'm just saying that no matter how i mean if you make it smaller all right it will still draw attention and the reason why we're always advising you i know so many design instructors would have explain the same thing to you the reason why they always advise that you make it small like this is because you see the the goal is to make the uh project speak the language that everyone understand and how we use the project to speak the language that everybody understand is immediately immediately they see the illustration the title is what I tell them that hey this is why this is why we have this here but when you have loaded the project with too many things, like the content are too close, all right? There's no room for proximity, no room for grouping the elements. It won't make that title obvious. It will make it draw up attention. That's one. Then the other thing I'm going to say to you again is, you see, whenever you're using illustration and you're using, um, I mean, like you want, you, you want to make your pro project look dynamic, see how you can create drama with the title of that project how you're going to create the drama correctly is make it look like the the illustration and the title they are actually together and the reason i'm saying this is this if i'm asked to work on this project i'll see how i can make maybe i'm not going to make the the uh the title this be on one line i wish i understand the language here all right what i can do is i can make Cuckoo online. All right. I can make Cuckoo online bigger. Okay. So Cuckoo is chicken. The designer just dropped a message now. Said Cuckoo simply means kitchen. I mean, chicken, not kitchen. Chicken. All right. And this can be on one line. All right. Remember, you should always try to see how you can make. You're tied to dynamic. Making it dynamic is a uh, part of how you can make your projects interesting. You know, people are already used to the same formats. So when they see you create something that they are not used to, it makes them stop and want to get involved. All right. So when they see cuckoo online or chicken online, they go, what? And this, all right, although I'm not really a fan of this, your background color, right? It, it's, it's, it looks dull to me. I would have preferred you use a picture of a farm where the chicken is also there. Or another thing you can do is you can use a white background and there, because the color on the chicken is dark enough to to be visible on a white background. Remember I told you guys about contrasting your illustrate your, your illustration with your background. So the color on the chicken is is the contrast on it is strong enough to to be visible on a white background. So I'm going to let me see if I can just I want to take this out from 
the background select subject I can make this bigger and make the mouth of the cuckoo all right rest on the letter e like that now this piece here is very important so i'm not going to cover that side and this can just be here yeah like this to still work this way all right yes if this is still better and you can now move this up here all right and if you want to add more drama you can still make it bigger and push this in here now you see it's already covering the letter e all right this part can move this down here like that you know, anytime I'm doing this for you guys, I always feel like having the uh, the raw file so I can redesign it. Okay, then this can come right here. Or you can you can create contrast by placing big on small like that. And it will still fly. So we can just make this a bit bigger like that and this is good then take this out this one here can now come on that this place let me see if i can just quickly take that out all right and i'm going to make this smaller and this can come but this can come here all right and like that and then you can change this color to black like that so this is still better mm -hmm. it's still better this way so let's see the before and after this is the after and this is the before before and after so it's time for us to start taking questions so um Mafus, you're free to ask your oh uh, yes um I want to ask, I have two questions. Um, so one is um, how to be so good at um, uh, layout and composition of um, flyer design. Like how to be the best, how to be good, so good at it. Okay. And layout and composition, because I, I lack, um, I don't know how to, um, I don't know how to compose um, like, uh, it was a critique from another designer. So he said that you should focus on layout and composition and then um, color, I should master color combos. So how can I be so good at that? All right, that's that's a good question. All right, so uh, first, your being good in layout and composition comes from what you load yourself with. You know, I said something at the beginning of this uh, review that what is standing in the gap between you and be, you becoming a good creative person is what you load yourself with, what you spend most of your time doing. So if you really want to enjoy uh, work, achieving good design composition, you need to spend time looking at designs that, uh, you know, that look successful to you. You know, I, I, I'm going to share a short story with you, and this story is similar to what we creatives go through. You know, I remember when I was still at the age of um, 14, all right, there's this bird that gave birth to, that laid egg at the back, uh, on, on our window, all right? And when the baby came out of the egg, and the mother noticed that we touched in fact she saw us touching the baby she left the baby and stopped coming to check on the baby so we took the baby which is the focus the goal of what i'm trying to let you guys understand now so we took the baby and then we started taking care of the baby and the baby grew to the point where you know the baby the, once the baby see the person that normally give it food is always the baby's always you know jumping and like that if i when you see any of us the baby's always excited then one day we brought the baby out from the cage and asked the baby to fly. Do you know that the baby did not fly? 
The baby didn't fly. We even threw the baby outside to go. The baby did not fly. And I'll tell you why I believe the baby did not fly. The baby grew up in, in a home where you see people walking and not flying. If the baby sees fellow birds flying, I'm sure you understand, okay, this is how I'm supposed to do. Where spreading my wings and then flying, uh, make use of the air. And that's the same thing that I apply to design. So if you really want to be a good creative person, where understanding how to achieve good design composition is concerned, you have to do like a bird that look at the way other birds fly. Check out good designs. I'm sure there are designs that when you see them, they capture your attention. You see the way the layout is. You see the way the composition looks. Take your time to understand why the design looks successful to you. You know, I shared this with you. I said there are times where it can be color. It can be the illustration used. And then I mentioned in this today in today's um, review that in this review that your content, your element should uh, hold something. They should be connected to something. Like they should rest on something. All right. They should be well aligned. So if you can understand this, I'm telling you, being able to achieve good layouts in terms of arranging your content is going to be very easy for you. One of the things that uh, we use all right as as um, designers to make our layouts look dynamic and attractive is what i did on this last design making something small be on something big or making something big be on something small so if you can understand that all right you will see yourself achieving good layout there are several ways you can make use of um, dynamic layout on your project but you can only achieve this when you spend time looking at good designs now this is not hard all right this is not hard but it's hard when you are looking at it like it's hard all right you need to foresee yourself as somebody who believes that yes you can do it you can understand what makes a good design successful the more you do that the more you grow and there's also the part of you reading and understanding the principles of design is very important you know as a designer when you don't understand this it's not really different from you um going on a journey where you don't even know the direction to get to where you're going all right there's a reason why we have those principles and then the uh, the principles of design so you need to understand that so you can know what you're doing whenever you're working on design projects. There are articles online that teaches how to do that. There are YouTube videos that help with um, understanding the principles of designs. And I have tutorials, design review videos that I believe if you watch them, it's also going to help you with knowing how to play with your layout. There are some designs that I critique here that look successful to me and I explain why the design looks successful. So you can also use that as uh, another way of learning how to understand good design layout and composition, or good design composition and layout. All right? Yeah. My name is Ahadi. I come from Tanzania. Okay. Yeah, my question is that uh, I hear you say this something that he, you in one post you, you you are not allowed to place element left others element right others center so my question is that in one poster how many uh how in any i i mean in one poster like how many how, how, alignment are we supposed to have yes 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 all right good so that's a good question you ask, all right? And I'm going to quickly teach you how to do it. Now, you can have more than one, but don't have more than two, all right? Now, you can have more than two. That is if the information on the project called for it. But if the information on the project never calls for it, please don't do it. Now, this is how you do it. So let's say this is your title, all right? This is your subtitle here. All right. These are the uh, points on the project. And then maybe the contact details comes here. Okay. Notice all these are 
facing this way. All right. So this is one alignment here. I'm sure this is flush um, left. All right. So if you want to draw attention to maybe small information on your project, because I know so many of you always make use of small information on your project, and that information is always looking hidden, or your client will complain that, oh, people can't really see that information. So this is how we do it in design. Because you know you can't make everything big. So what you will now do is to now put that in small information, let it be alone on this side. And you'll notice that here now, we've achieved contrast by making people's focus be on this. Because everything here flush to this side. But if we have the title here, subtitle here, the point here, then another information here no that you have destroyed the the layout it's not going to look successful all right but you do it if maybe like for example you're trying to achieve a three layout when i say three i'm talking of let's say this is a three now all right you now want to make it look like these are the branches of the three then you can now you know have those information or another one you can do is you can have this like this then this can come here all right this can still come here. It's still like this. All right. It's still like this. All right. It's still like this. Then another information can still come here because this still aligned to this. And if you're going to do it this way, it means you have to make sure that this line here, this content here is where is this side here is well aligned. Then you can now have maybe one information here. Or another good one is. Everything is aligned here. You know, this is central line. All right. Then you now put another one here. Or you put it here. Like that. I hope you get that. Yes. All right. So, yeah. I'm going to stop here. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. And if you have not subscribed, remember to hit the subscribe button. Because I'm going to be posting more of tutorials like this for you guys. In order for you not to miss it, remember to check the post notification bell. Very important. And if there's anything you learned from this video, kindly drop a message on the comment section. All right. And I'll appreciate if you can do that. Thank you all for watching again. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.